Okay, so I finally have a Compute Module 4, and I'm really excited about this one. I took it apart as soon as I got it. Even though it comes as a fully assembled kit, it is actually designed to be a mini router. Uh, Seed Studio sent me this in exchange for a review uh, to basically test it out and go through it. And uh, it's been really exciting finding out how different the Compute Module 4 is and also how it works. Uh, it's actually, I think, more tricky than the Pi 4 for operation and, and various different things. But that said, this mini router kit is completely set up for you. So you don't really have to do anything. And if you're buying this, you're buying it for the fact that you want much more control on your network. You want a much faster, better managed, more secure network. But uh, back to the Compute Module 4. So the one that comes supplied is the 32 gig EMMC one. So it's got 32 gig of reasonably fast storage already built in. It's Wi-Fi, it's four gig. But as you can see, connectivity wise, there's pretty much nothing on it. Underneath, there are two multi-pin connections which connect it to this custom board. And the custom board is pretty special. So this is the official IO board. Uh, and you can see it's much, much bigger than the one I've got from Seed because it's designed to give you all the connectivity. So it's got full set of GPIO pins, uh, full size HDMIs, all sorts of things on there. But one limitation of it is that it's only got USB 2 as a, a standard connection on it. Obviously, there are other connections on there as well. But if you just want to plug in something USB, uh, it only has USB 2. If we go back to the seed board, you can see we have two USB 3 sockets. And there's also on the back on the pins here, there's another USB 3 socket as well. And this comes from the PCIe connection. Uh, and so it delivers super fast connections but also we've got two gigabit ethernet ports on there, which is all about the modem side of it, obviously. Uh, you can see as well, there is a micro HDMI, which you don't really need on this because you would probably uh, remotely connect to this, but you can if you want to. And nice to see a USB-C connection to power it. And the power supply is something very interesting. So this is the one that comes supplied with it, obviously USB-C, nice big thick cable. Uh, but if we zoom into it, this is a 5 volt, 4 amp, 20 watt USB-C power supply. And uh, that's more powerful than the standard Raspberry Pi one. And uh, it will be interesting to see what that does, well, to the Pi 4 or anything else when you're plugging in extra devices. To have that extra power there could come in handy. And mine came with all these different country specific plug adapters to go on it and they all feel really nice and I'll put a link to this mini router in the description because there's loads more connectivity on here as well um, so lots of things that I haven't mentioned so go through that if you're looking for extra things like display connectivity extra storage a fan uh, although that said the cooling is very very good so uh, the carrier board here is standard 60 degrees carrier board with CM4 and aluminium case 40.9 degrees. So let's put it back into its case, uh, do this in the reverse and get it connected up to my network. So let's put it back inside its case. Uh, you can see here, this is the part that takes the heat up to the aluminium. And if we pop it in, it just slots in. So there aren't any screws for this bit. You can see that slots in uh, and then get the screws lined up and pop this base on and then pop the four screws in. There we go. So it's got rubber feet, these long rubber feet on it, and it also has a hook so you can do it vertically or horizontally. And as you can see, everything is all nice and accessible, all on that one side. But this is how it comes, pre-assembled with the software installed. So if you get this new, pop in the network cable. Now this is the cable that goes to my router. I've also got another network cable, which I'm just gonna plug straight into my Pi 4 8 gig. Uh, the one that I'm running the operating system on. So plug this in and then we just need some power and then we just leave that for a bit to start itself up. It would have been nice if it told you which one was the in and out of the ethernet, but then there's so many different uses for this. Maybe that doesn't apply and it's just in my case of how I'm trying this out. So with the camera moved back, uh, this cable is coming from my router, so just as you'd normally plug it into a Pi, uh, this one is going out from the mini router into my Pi 4 8 gig, uh, which is running Twister OS at the moment. So let's go into screen capture and have a look at how it all looks. Okay, so if I close down the web browser, uh, you can see at the bottom uh, that the ethernet is connected. If you plug in the cables and don't turn the mini router on, 
it just works as a pass through so you will get internet but you're not getting any of the benefits of a mini router but if i open up terminal i can ssh into this so basically i can control it remotely uh, so ssh root 192.168.2.1 that's the standard setup that it comes with hit return and you can see here open wrt wireless freedom so it is up and running and there's various features I can use from this. I can do uh, power off uh, if I want to shut it down remotely. I can use reboot and I can also use halt. But I don't want to do any of that. I just want to access it. So let's call up a web browser and pop in the web address, which is there, look, 192.168.2.1. Again, all this is configurable and you can change all of this. I haven't put a password on. I realize that you should put a password on, but I'm just playing around with it at the moment. You can see that you get this sort of welcome screen. And this is basically the idea is to replace your router. So your router is likely to be much more underpowered than this compute module four. It's likely the software isn't anywhere near as up to date or as maintained and doesn't give you the same sort of control. So if I hit enter, you can see it's warning me there is no password set on this router. And it comes up with a huge amount of information. now. I'm not sure what I should share online, so I'm gonna blur most of these screens out, but you can see on the left-hand side, status, overview, we've got firewall settings. Uh, it's really, really clear. If you've ever played around with settings on your router, uh, certainly with mine, some of the settings are really slow and really hard to find. The nice thing about this is uh, there's loads of support forums and things on this, so if you wanna do something very unusual on your network, better security, more access, limiting things it, it is so, there's just so much stuff in here i mean i it's not something that is normally my field so i'm a bit lost on a lot of it uh, but you can see here systems services we've got docker and containers we've got nas storage uh, we've got vpn options on here as well so really really impressive but as i say i don't know how much i can show of that uh, without sharing information that i'm not supposed to be sharing online so let's close that down and I'll put a link to the OpenWRT website. This is software that can be installed on other routers as well, but obviously the big thing about this is the Compute Module 4 is a powerful computer uh, with four gig of RAM, and you imagine that controlling all of your network. So you can see here, reasons to use OpenWRT. People install OpenWRT because they find it to be superior to the stock firmware of their router or embedded device. This page showcases many aspects of OpenWRT. Obviously, you can go through this and see what you want, but the main headings, performance and stability, security, extensibility, and community support. So look through this if you're looking to get a better solution. Anyway, I'm gonna take it apart again and uh, connect it up to my Pi, just to show how you would flash a different operating system to this. I realize if you bought this, you're buying it for a purpose, but I wanted to see if it ran other software. So it's back out of its case again, because I need to access these little pins here. You can see one of them says boot, and one of them says ground and power. I need to plug something on that. Now I'm so used to the Raspberry Pi 4 and 400 that I just assumed writing to a compute module 4 was gonna be the same sort of process. It isn't, it's very different. Um, and uh, thanks very much to Jeff Geerling, uh, for this blog and also James A. Chambers. Both of these blogs have been really, really valuable uh, because I really did get stuck. I thought, oh, I'll just put the operating system on an SD card or a USB stick, plug it in, and I'll be able to boot from that. I'll be able to change the boot order from Raspberry Config. All of that sort of stuff was, was very, very different. So let's go back to the Compute Module 4 because in order to flash an operating system to this, I need to put a cable on the boot and the ground connection. So I'll just use the red one from this multi-cable I got from my Pico kit. So one on there. And obviously if I had a cable with just one on it with ends, I could use that. So ignore all the other colors. So all I've done is connected up uh, these first two pins, the, uh, the boot and the ground with the red cable. So it's just connecting it up and that enables it to go into a different boot mode, which means it can be accessed from my Pi. And this bit took quite a bit longer. Uh, I was doing the right thing, but this cable and this cable, although both USB-C didn't support enough data uh, and just weren't compatible. So I've used, I think I got this with my uh, Google Pixel phone when I had a Google Pixel phone and it's uh, a better USB-C data cable. So let's plug that in. 
I'm just going to plug it into USB 2 uh, and plug this one in to the USB-C socket. Now obviously this is different compared to what carrier board you have and if you have the official board which everybody else seems to be using uh, in most of the instructional videos which kind of makes sense uh, then there are different ways of doing it but yeah now it's connected up uh, let's go over to screen capture so first up let's copy this bit from the Linux line sudo apt install lib USB open up a terminal and paste that in next bit we need to do the git clone so copy that and paste that in. Okay, so we can type in the next bit. So CD USB boot and then make. And as long as you don't get an error message, we should be all right so far. So sudo dot forward slash RPI boot. And that's the message we wanted to see. So now if we go down to the folders, uh, we can see that boot and root fs are showing up. So we're going to boot and uh, config.txt. We can change things just as we normally would with a Raspberry Pi 4. I've added this line, the DT overlay, which enables USB on boot up because I thought that was what was going to enable USB boot, but it didn't seem to work for me. So let's start up Raspberry Pi imager and hopefully it will recognize it normally now. So choose OS. I'm going to use ordinary Raspberry Pi OS 32 bit and choose storage and you can see my compute module is showing up now as it would normally show up an SD card so click on that and hit right and yes and let's come back when that's all done okay so that's Raspberry Pi OS written to the compute module 4 so let's close all this down and safely eject it and let's boot it up yeah and it's detected my display and everything and it's booting as normal Okay, so that's booted up all normally. Uh, obviously the HDMI is working, you can see that. Uh, the ethernet is working absolutely fine as well. Um, and, uh, and the USB sockets are working because I've got my keyboard plugged into that. So everything works with Raspberry Pi OS. Uh, if I go into Raspi config, uh, I wonder if we've got boot options in here. So we've got boot order. And yeah, interesting, because it, it doesn't mention about the EMMC. Uh, I need to do a bit more reading about that as to see how that works, how I can enable USB boot, uh, especially on this board. Um, but, uh, but yeah, everything is working. Thanks very much to Seed Studio for sending me this mini router. Uh, reading about that OpenWRT, it is an incredible system and, uh, and the hardware seems to match up really well to it. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.